Here it goes. Hold your glove out. Oh, oh. Yay! Good catch. Up here. <laughs> Up in the air. Hold your glove. It is a feeling no mother wants to have. Oh, look at that. I try to be in the moment with him. Can I have a hug? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I never know when my next moment may be or not be. A bond these women wish they didn't share. If I can give them 10 years of good life and die as a consequence because of the you know, side effect of maybe cancer in the long run, 10 years of good life to them and raising my kids is worth it. The diagnosis no mom wants her kids to know about. And they told me that um, I had nodules in my lungs, a mass around my heart, valves, enlarged spleen, enlarged liver, and a mass in my ureter. Tony Robinson has a young son. Cassento White has two children. Kim Litchfield is the mother of three. They all should be in the primes of their lives. Should be. As the actual d disease progresses, um, if they can't control it, it can kill me. It will kill me. The disease is sarcoidosis, the world's most common fibrotic lung disease of which few people are even aware. Certainly looks like... Uh... It is nicknamed the mystery disease, and solving this puzzle has consumed Dr. David Moeller for two decades. The director of the sarcoidosis clinic at Johns Hopkins Hospital, he is one of the world's leading researchers. I think it's an poorly recognized, underfunded, and underappreciated uh, public health problem and we really need to increase the attention and the awareness of, of this disease in the general public. Symptoms include shortness of breath, fatigue, chest and joint pain, loss of vision, and neurological and skin problems. Sarcoidosis generally manifests itself in the lungs, but also wreaks havoc on the brain, heart, liver, kidneys, and nervous system. I was bounced around from physician to physician. Tens of thousands of Americans, like Carl Robbins, suffer from sarcoidosis. The cause is unknown. A cure remains elusive. The statistics are that 50 to 60 percent of people who have the disease eventually go into remission and stay in remission. And of the remaining 30 to 40 percent, they have sort of a waxing and waning course, and 5% of people die from it. And that's where people like Sean Hull come in. You may have seen him referee some of college basketball's biggest games. That was a brilliant piece of officiating by Sean Hull. And we'd like to welcome you to the 11th annual Drive for the Cure golf tournament. But there is only one opponent he is determined to beat, sarcoidosis. My mother passed away with the disease in 1996. She suffered with disease for 13 years. Shortly after Ida Hull's death, Sean formed the Life and Breath Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to uh, raise research dollars to be able to give clinical researchers the ability to find a cure for this disease. For Sean to be proactive and saying that he wants to prevent this type of tragedy happening to someone else is really a special thing. And my first guests tonight have both been affected by the disease. Sean Hull lost his mother to sarcoidosis. It is his mission, his passion, spreading the word, and, uh, raising money. Our, our mission is really to, to, to get the word out about sarcoidosis. So the children of other sarcoidosis sufferers don't experience and lose what he did. I have a son, he's 19 months old. Um, I wanna see him grow up, I wanna see his children grow up, I, I wanna be here. I help other people and if I leave this world, what I give back to society leaves with it. You know, and if somebody gives to sarcoidosis, maybe what I give back to society, you know, could last a little bit longer. My six-year-old recently, I actually was watching the video for this event, and he was watching it with me. Sean was talking about his mom passing away from sarcoidosis, and he said, you have this disease? And I said, yes, and he started crying, and, you know, said, you're not gonna die, are you? And, don't know. To make a donation, and a difference, please visit lifeandbreath.org.